Anybody else? All right, thank you for everybody that, that shared that. And so we said that what we would do, we would come off of, um, we were in the book of Judges. And we said we would come off of the book of Judges and that we would, um, that we would um, study the gospel of Mark. Anybody know why I said that we would study the gospel of Mark for the period of man, for the season of man? It's because of Mark chapter 1, verse 13. I don't know, what, what does that say? Portraying Jesus as the suffer, the suffering servant, so right. that's why we're going to right. That's absolutely correct. Every um, each writer has his own voice. It's just like if you all wrote a story. You know, all of us could see the same thing, write a story on what we saw, but because of who we are, our life experiences, um, you know, just because of we we're, we're different people, all those stories can sound a little bit different. And, um, and so and so, what you do when you find out when if, when you look at the gospels, you'll see them. You know, you, you'll see them tell the same story, but they'll they'll tell it. They'll, they'll sound different um, when they say it. And then even a lot of their focus will be focused on how they perceive Christ. And, um, and just like Octavia said, um, Mark. I mean, his view of, of Christ well, it had it had a lot to do with the suffering, you know, of Christ. Um, John, you look in the Gospel of John, and you see a lot of miracles, more miracles than you see in any other in any other gospel. Um, and so, and so, even like when, when I was in school and we and we studied we, we studied this, um, I used to just try to just just guess, you know, and just kind of I used to like just to listen to a, listen to a, 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 a passage of scripture and then try to hear, see, see who that sounds like, and, and and probably you know 80 percent of the time. You can probably, you know, guess it right, you know, by listening to what they're trained, what they're saying. Luke deals with a lot of healing. You know, he's, you know, Luke was a physician, and so Luke portrayed him as a healer, um, and a lot of the, the tone of what he wrote. Um, and, and Matthew, he was the Jewish Messiah. Matthew made sure that we understand that he was the Jewish Messiah. So in Matthew, you know, you see where it's always, it's always tied. It's always real clear that Jesus was Jewish. And, um, and so and I used to just kind of like to do that kind of stuff and just listen to a, a gospel script, you know, passage, and then try to hear that voice. And, um, and, and we do it the same way. We can, all of us, because of our life experiences, you know, we can see something happen, but we can tell it, and we can tell it in a way that kind of, it, it, it fits who we are and how we look at, you know, and how we look at, look at life. You know, somebody can see a glass and it's, it's halfway. But to one person it might be half empty, and to another person it might be half full, um, just based on your life experience. And so, and so that as a Christian, that that's real handy to really begin to be able to separate the gospels and actually hear their voices, uh, because if you really just so as you're studying, you know, and you and you and you you hear the voice of Mark and, and understand what Mark is trying to do, um, you can get you can get a little bit more out of the scripture. Um, but he, he does portray Jesus as a suffering servant. And, and I think that you all will be able to, with us talking about that up front, I think you will probably be able to begin to identify um, some places so where, wow, okay, I see what he's saying there. Wow, I, I see I see what he's saying right there. Because some of the, the, the stuff that Mark talks about with his suffering, you got some stuff in Matthew because Matthew wants him to be the Jewish Messiah. Matthew doesn't even mention some of that, some of the suffering. You know, he had a whole chapter on suffering. Matthew might not even deal with, you know, how intense it was. 
or might not really paint a real gory picture of what happened um, because you know people just have um, their different perspective. So we'll start out in um, chapter one, verse one, and um, we'll work our way through. And um, and hopefully Mark is actually the shortest of all the gospels. And um, I think it's 16 chapters if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 16, the 16 chapters, and hopefully, um, hopefully we can work. We have six weeks, um, so it's gonna take some looking, uh, but but um, but hopefully we can, you know, we can get through a good portion of it, and we might extend it on through and go back to judges when they were finished. But um, we'll we'll see what God says. But um, so if I can get somebody to start reading for me in Mark. The first chapter and start out in the um, in the first verse. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord to make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert, preaching the preaching of baptism of the temple. For the forgiveness of sins, the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate lupus and wild honey. And this way his message. After me will come one more thousand that I, the thongs of whose saddles I am not worthy to sit down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is the start of Mark. Just for just just looks. Let's look and see how maybe Matthew, how he started out, how he started out his um his gospel in chapter one. So let's go read that in. What, what is, what, what's going on in, in just his, his, his introductory piece? What, 
Well, what did, did something stand out to you? He said that many other people had already written narratives, but he had investigated them. And since he was there, he felt it was, he was compelled to write down in an orderly sequence. I mean, does he sound that smart? I mean, he's like. Yeah, they were wrong. I yeah. I mean, he's, he's bringing some intellect to it. I mean, he's bringing some, you know, he, he's bringing something more to this thing. I mean, he's pretty, sound pretty educated. Um, you know, he's, he's a doctor. And um, and uh, but you see the approach when he comes, you know, many you got other other folks that they talked about these accounts. Um, but but this is you know I've done some research, and um, and, and I'm coming from this I'm coming from this angle right here. You know he has his own voice. It looked like he was identifying. Huh? Wasn't he identifying? I, identifying what? The ones that they were speaking of in um, Matthew. Huh? I guess you got no. Tell me why he said it. To me, it seems like he was identifying the recipients, the names of those. I, I think he's acknowledging, you know, Matthew's done his thing, you know, um, Mark has done his thing, and, 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 and what I'm doing is, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm doing it, I think mine has a little more research involved in it. Mine, I've done some, I've done some homework, in, and I'm going to bring it to you, you know, from, from this angle. Right here, and um, but I, he, I, I don't think he's down downgrade. I think he's respecting. You know, I think we can say it that way. I think he's respecting the work that they've done, and, and he's kind of saying, I'm, you know, I'm, and, and 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 I'm going to bring it to you from this perspective right here. Um, yes, ma'am. According to this, Luke was a physician, so therefore he's bringing because he evidently felt that he had delivered them. Mm -hmm. So he's going to tell you how they were delivered in what right. order. Right. I mean, he, he, he's an educated man. Yeah. And and, um, and 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 on top of and, and so you're gonna have that piece, the education piece, and then you're gonna have the piece of position. And so and so you probably gonna see a lot of stuff that had to do with him being able to, to be to heal, you know, and and, and, and deliver and and, and be, they, you know um, fix the problem. Um, you probably gonna feel a lot of that in Luke. Um, George. Well, he's, he was more practical. Um, you look at. Uh, Acts, which is also written by Luke, he's more, uh, he'll tell you what, what steps would be going on, even with Paul and his, uh, uh, his journeys are more accurate than in Mark, and Mark is more rough than uh, all the other guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost, like, like, almost like a college professor, you know, kind yeah. of. And, and, and none, none is wrong, but you just see the different experiences. Somebody just take a little quick look at John real quick and how he starts out. In the beginning, the Word already existed. He was with God. He was God. He was in the beginning with God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Life okay. and the was in him. Okay. And, and John's approach, what, what, I mean, John, how, how does John sound? Huh? What I mean, there's nothing natural about what John's talking about. Like in the beginning was God. And, and, and it, I mean, he's already just jumped right on the supernatural part. He knew the word, where it was in him. I mean, John John not even starting out like this was a regular man. You know, and, and, and John, he starts out with the miraculous. If you listen to those words that Judas said. I mean, there's nothing natural about that. In the beginning, it was God. And it goes, how, how does it go, Judah? In the beginning, the Word already existed. He was with God. He was God. And, and, and so, I mean, all man, he's, he's, John is like, this is not just a man. You know, this is this is supernatural right from the get-go. You know, this 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 man that we're going to spend a, spend a whole gospel talking about, please be real sure that this is God. You know, we're going to call him Jesus, but he was God, and he was he was right there in the beginning when God started doing all his God stuff. He was right there with God. And that's what that's how he come, right off the right off the bat. And that, that's his voice, and that's his angle that he's taking. And so he's never going to leave you wondering, is this, you know, he's real clear. This is God that I'm talking about. Do you get him right now? No, no, not really. Okay. okay. And so I, I did that because I just wanted you all to catch the voices. Um, even though, and this is sometimes where people, you know, 
this is sometimes where people um some people get frustrated with with academia when it comes to when you start applying academia to scripture. Um, but I, I think it, it takes you to a I think it I think it helps. And some people get frustrated with academia because some people want to say, well, the scripture is just God speaking to a man and the man writing down what God said. But you can't take the man or the woman out of it. They still have their own personality. They still have their own experiences. They still have their own everything that they went through. And when they write, their voice is going to come out in their writing. And so, and so when we look at scripture, you have to be willing to understand that God used the person. God can preach the same sermons through me and Sonia, but because of our experiences, that same sermon might not come out the same way. Our, our, our life experiences, you know, might come out. Y'all know Dr. Um, Parker that did the revival for us, DJ Parker? Yeah. He can put the same sermon in me and Dr. Parker, but I guarantee you it won't sound the same coming out. Because my vocabulary is not even a quarter of his vocabulary. And, um, and he's, you know, he's a lot more intelligent than I am. And so you're going to see his experiences come out in the same sermon, the same message. And what we have to do when we're looking at the gospel, we have to be able to appreciate that voice as well as what, what that voice is saying. Because, they, because then we can understand where that voice is trying to take us. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I can tell you something. But sometimes you're able to take my experiences. I can tell you a story. I can say, yeah, I saw an accident. And this is what happened. That's what happened. But, but, but because you know me, you know, there might be some things in what I said that, that you say, well, you know, that, that's kind of wrong right there. I, I know that an accident happened. You know, I, I, I know this happened, but I kind of see Ron in that too. You know, and you're able to kind of separate my voice from what really happened. Not that my voice is not telling you what really happened. But I might paint it up a little bit for you. I might color it for you. Or I might not color it at all for you. But because you, you recognize my voice, you're able to understand that story a little bit a little bit better. Yes, ma'am. And my book says, my Bible says, among the four gospels, the book of John stands in a class by itself. Although it portrays in general outline the life and mission of Jesus Christ. But he stands out to himself. A I, I, I think all of them really stand out by themselves. But the reason that they're saying John is because John hit you in the face miracle after miracle after miracle. If you go through John, you just keep hitting in the face of miracle. By the time you finish with the gospel of John, you know that he's a miracle working God. I mean, he just, I mean, just miracle after, you think about all the amazing miracles, water and, and, and wine and walking on what? Just think about all the miracles. And then probably 80% 80, 80 of them are going to come from the Gospel of John. You know? And, and, and so, like, if you think, so if you're thinking to yourself, you're thinking, if you're like me, because I can't, if you come and ask me, you say, hey, Reverend Ron, what is that scripture about this story right here? Um, I can tell you it was probably in one of the Gospels, or I can tell you it was in here. I can tell you it was in 1 Corinthians 10 and 2. I, I'm, that just, I can't do that. Some people are good at that. I, that's not me. I, I, I'm not a good memory type person. And um, But because I know voices, it, I can tell you, okay, that right there, that sounds like John. And, I can, and, and, and I'm probably going to be 85% correct that, 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 that there's a good chance that that's John or, or that sounds like Mark right there. He, he, went, he was that graphic in talking about the crucifixion? That sounded like Mark right there. You know? <coughs> uh, and, so, and, so, and so that's the benefit to, to, to know voices, to know how Paul sounds, to know how, how James sounds, and to, to, to really start knowing voices and know those authors. And, but you can only do that if you acknowledge that they have their own voice. And you have to be able to back off the idea that God just told them what to write and they wrote it. They wrote it, but they wrote it in their own voice. And, that, and, 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 and once we can accept that, and it doesn't take anything away from God. It's right. still from God, but he gave it, he inspired it, but he didn't write it for me. Right. He just inspired it. And, I, and, and when it came out through inspiration, it was inspiration through this vessel right here. And so all the stuff that come along with this vessel, you're probably going to see it in how I wrote it. 
And so until we can until we can back off of the fact that it came word from word just the way that God said right it, if we can't back off of that, it's going to be hard for us to accept the fact that these people's voices are in there. But if we can if we can accept that without saying that we're saying there's some, something wrong that is, that, is, that is fallible, that's something wrong with it, if we can accept that, and then we can start hearing the voices in the different writing that can, that can help us when, when you like me and don't necessarily can't remember where every scripture comes from, but you can hear what it says and say that sounds like this person, Judy. Oh, just a comment. So many times over the years I've heard people say, well, it can't be God inspired because it's always been the same. And the example of many people is the Gospels. Because there's four different people and they're all writing four different stories. They're not all writing the same stories. Mm -hmm. And if God had written, they would have all written the same stories. And I like what you're saying mm -hmm. because it's their experiences through it's their experiences. So they wouldn't all see exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And if God had had them, if he would have only needed one person, if only one person needed to write that book. But he needed to see it from all the different angles of the room. Right. To see it. That's it. And I, I think that's a real, I like that, from all the different angles. I, I like that right there. Oh, and, and I think that's the, that's the idea. It's not just this one, this one, you had different people looking at the same thing and giving yeah. an account of what they gave. And I think it gives us a more full story. Yes, yes sir. I think that's why, uh, you know, some people come to church and they be like, that, that was for me. Mm -hmm. And other people can say, that was for me too. But, you know, them different voices that they came for them different people. Right, right. Absolutely correct. All right. So here in Mark chapter 1, and I, who was this code? Was that you that read it? Who read it? Uh, yeah, that was you? Okay, so we, we made it through verse 8. And so here, this is Mark talking. And the reason I'm, pound, it's pound, the reason I'm pushing this is because I want you all to pick up Mark's voice when we're commenting. I want you to pick up Mark's voice. And so this is Mark, and, and he's saying this is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look. I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. And so just right off of the bat, he refers to something Isaiah said, but in, 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 but in, what I, in this thing that Isaiah, in this account that Isaiah gave, it, 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 was, far, it was far from majestical. You know, it got this man out in the wilderness. You know, and I mean, right now he's talking about, you know, and we're ready to go into the John, the whole John story. Um, I guess the first thing we catch, we catch in there, he doesn't even necessarily um, begin talking about, you know, just, he doesn't even jump right into Jesus, but he jumps into the, the struggle. And, and there's this voice out in the wilderness. And if you think of somebody just out in the desert, out in the wilderness, just crying out, you know, there's nothing pretty about that. You know, there's nothing majestic about that. It's almost, a, it's almost desperation to be out in the wilderness crying. And this is this picture that Mark is, because this, this is his view of what's going on, almost a, a desperation thing. And he says that his voice is out in the wilderness crying, saying, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that the people should be baptized to show they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. So all of a sudden, right out the right out the right out the um, gate, he's addressing that that the people are broken, the people are in need of something, and and, and, and this and this person comes to prepare a way for for the one that's going to bring it. Um, but but he, he's dealing with need and uh, a, a need to fix something that's broken. Um, um, right, you know, right out of the, right out of the gate. And even when we talk about the idea of looking at this right here for for Lent season, you know, in our whole conversation last week, Lent doesn't mean anything to us if we don't realize our brokenness. You know, if, if we think that if we think that everything is fine, that there are not some things 
that um, it doesn't matter how together your life is, um, there's always some brokenness to be able to go and deal with. There's always some brokenness to be able to go and address and say, you know what, I got, I, I have to improve in this area. You know, I have to improve in this area. You know, I, I, it, it, it was easy for me to find, you know, what, what I'm going to sacrifice for Lynn. You know, uh, and, and, and so you, you have to be able to um, um, kind of take this view that Mark takes um, and, and, and be able to, not that you're war with me, but you have to be able to be willing to, to look in the mirror and acknowledge that there, there's, as good as I'm going right now, good as things are, there's some areas that I've that I really got to work on in my life. There's some brokenness that, that needs to be addressed. And, and God bless you if, if you just... If you just keep staring at your life and, and you can't find anything that needs to be improved, God, God bless you. And I want to be like you one day, um, but, but, I'm, but I'm not like you now. Um, but right out the gate, he addresses that there's some brokenness that needs to be addressed. All right? Anybody? Comments? Questions? All right? And so then he goes on when he talks about this person is coming, but John the Baptist is going to um, preach repent. Tell people to repent of their sins and turn to God and be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair. He wore a leather belt around his waist for food. He ate locusts and wild honey. And so you paint this guy up that's in the ministry. You know, you got this guy that's in the ministry. And while doing the ministry, he has a major response. He said, repent, and God will forgive you, forgive your sin. And he said, and then all these people came out to the wilderness and did. But this guy don't have a robe on. You know, this guy doesn't have a nice shiny cross on. There's nothing alluring about this guy. The, the, the only thing he has is the message. His, 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 his nothing about him physically is appealing. All he has is a message because his clothes, what, is it, what do his clothes look like? <laughs> yeah, from coarse camel hair. I mean, there, there, there's nothing refined about this. There's nothing refined about this man. You know, and, and he had a leather belt around his waist, and he ate grasshoppers and honey. That was his food. That was his meal. He, he, didn't, get, he didn't go to five-star restaurants. You know, he didn't, this man... This, this man literally sacrificed any kind of pleasure. You know, this, this wasn't the time. You can't say, well, everybody, everybody didn't know. They came from their plush places out to him in the wilderness. And so there was a sacrifice that he made. And, 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 and John, I mean, and Mark is speaking about ministry. He's pointing out that this man in the midst of ministry you know, he made all of these sacrifices, but there was a major response. And the only thing he presented was the gospel. Or not the gospel, but was repent. You know, for the, you know, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent of your sin. And he got a major response. Any, any comments on that? Any discussion on that? Uh, was he a Nazarite? Who? Uh, uh, John the Baptist. I don't know, but I, I got a book right here that'll, that'll tell me. But if you already know, don't make me look now. Is that a real question or is that a rhetorical question? Uh, uh, that's, uh, I think he was. Okay, so I don't, don't make me look now. You already know that. So, he, all right. he has the rules and regulations that he had to uh, go by as a Nazarite. One of them was the same thing like Samson. He couldn't cut his hair. Okay. And he couldn't see death. Okay. And uh, a few other things. Okay. Okay, and, and so this man lived a life of sacrifice. And this is who Mark chose to, to put out in the front of his story. But he said that this man had major returns. When he put the word out there, it didn't return to him void. And I think that that's something for us um, that it's, it's not, you know, we got to be able to, uh, you have some churches that, you know, you know, um, you have some churches put the word out there. They'll stand, they'll stand up. And it's, 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 it's different sermon styles. So you have different sermon styles. And you have some sermon styles um, to, where, to, where, to where they'll just read the scripture. 
Nothing else. And, and they're, 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 they're understanding. Is that God doesn't need our paint to make the scripture better. This is what the scripture says. Scripture by scripture, word by word. He don't need he doesn't need me to make analogies. He doesn't need me to, to he doesn't need me to tell stories to make it clear. This is the word, and now this word can make the difference. And there, there are people that preach sermons just like that. Because their view is, what can I add to the word? I, I can only I can only make it worse if the word is, is, is as powerful as it's going to get all by itself. And, um, and, 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 and in this right here, this is all he's putting out there. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's nothing about me that draws you to Christ. There's nothing about, about my lifestyle that draws you to Christ. There, have you ever heard churches that say, um, a minister that say that that the that the the pastor has to that the pastor has to to, to, to to look a certain way and, and fit a certain kind of image so the people will know what you know that God you know what God is able to do like he's like 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 a witness this is what God is able to do it and, and I've heard it, pastor if if, if 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 the pastor is driving around in a and a hoop bit, you know, how the people gonna know, you know, that God can bless, you know, and 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 and, um, and, and so people, you know, there's some that feel like that the minister has to look like, has to look like they are they are they are blessed, that they are this and that they are that, and and, and that's how, how some people go forth, how people some, how some people go forth in ministry, um, and um, but but Mark's approach. Is it's the word. Yeah. This man is not have, doesn't have to be appealing at all. This man is in, got camera hair wrapped around him, got a belt around holding up his stuff. Got you know out there looking eating locusts, eating grasshoppers and honey. You know that's his diet. And, and, and but but when he when he puts the word out there, the word does it for itself. And this is Mark's approach. And so just lit, just think about Mark's mindset. He, there's nothing, there, there, there's nothing glamorous about, you know, Mark didn't want to paint this glamorous picture. He just put just flat out word out there and shows the, where the word calls the response from the people. Any comments, any questions? Yes, sir. Well, see, you know, you go on in the last week, what we were talking about, it's not what's on the outside, mm -hmm. the spirit is in you. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter how you dress. And you know, you're going to let us know what we're talking about. I was reading about when John the Baptist was in prison, Jesus came to see him. And he asked the question, Was you the one? I'm respecting up. And Jesus told him, He said, Have you seen what I've done? Mm -hmm. Death is here again, blind and see, lame walk again. You know, he had doubts too. But that lets you know that it don't matter what's on the outside, it's what's inside you. That's what counts. That's what probably was inside. And I mean, I mean, that's why we should never look down on no one. Mm -hmm. If somebody dressed a certain way, we look down. Right. You don't know what's inside that person. Right. I mean, this is a great example by right. John Dow. And the I, way he dressed. And, and I think, and we have to always keep in mind that statement that Judith made, the angle of the room. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have somebody else that's going to drop names. You know, you ever seen a name drop them? Mm -hmm. You know, Matthew dropping names. Matthew come out at the gate. He's connected to David. He's connected to Obed. He's connected to Jet. You know, he's connected. Matthew come out the gate dropping names. Right. Okay. And, 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 and so as we're looking at it, we just have to appreciate Mark for his angle that he's at. Because when we get to Matthew, we're going to see some, well, now he approached it from a different angle. He, he's dropping names. He's showing what family he's from. You know, you know, and, and Mark might say it don't matter. Doesn't matter what family you're from because it's about the word, it's about the message. Right. But then Matthew says there's value in where he comes from. You know, what family he's connected to. You know, those kind of things. And nobody's wrong, right. but we gotta we gotta just be able to appreciate what angle we're looking from. What what where are we in the room? Are we are we over near the kitchen? You know, or, or you know, are we are we in the den looking? You know, where where are we? 
when we when we're looking at this story unfold, and I think that's what we want to appreciate right there. All right, and we want to make sure we don't we don't totally sell out. But let's just appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Don't totally sell out because you might have, you might find yourself in another gospel having to back off or either doubt that gospel. And so don't just totally sell out on their on one's approach. Just a, just a, appreciate the approach. There's a scripture in Proverbs. I think it is there. Proverbs. It tells you that when you go to someone's house and you can't control your appetite and you go to their house and then you have an appetite for what they have, that you ought to slit your own throat. And that's, in, that's in the book of Proverbs. And basically what it tells you, you have to be able to go into somebody's house and appreciate what they have without wanting it yourself. Because if you every time you see something somebody else had and you have that appetite, that you, you, you're going you're gonna to end up in a very unhealthy state because you're trying to eat everything that you have rather than just be able to say, you know what, I appreciate what Sister Melvin has at her house without me going back home and saying, you know, baby, we got to have this. You know, I, and, and so and so you got to be controlling. So even as we're looking at these Gospels, let's appreciate the way Mark looked at it, but don't go all the way in and say Mark is the only one that's right. You know, that, that approach is the only, let's just appreciate that approach right there that says, you know what, there's value in personal sacrifice and value in understanding that, that just the word alone can do it. Because there's somebody else that we're going to respect later on that might come and say, well, no, but there's also some value in a little cream, you know, a little fluff. All right? All right? So he said, so, so, so it says in verse 7, John announced, someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. So much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandal. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John's approach right off of the bat is, I'm not even the man. You know, it, Mark just sees his backseat kind of man. He just, it doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have right. to be, he's just this backseat kind of man in his approach to ministry. And so John is doing a great work. You know, he's doing, he's getting some amazing response. I mean, anybody that does ministry and take ministry serious, I mean, that's your goal, to be effective at what you're doing. And I don't think it's just ministry, I think it's life. But that's your goal. I don't, believe me, I don't, I don't, I don't come to St. Augustine every day to just do stuff. I, I want to be effective. I want to see increase. I want to see production. And so, and I think anybody that's purpose-driven you know, anybody that's purpose, purpose driven wants to see progress, wants to see increase, wants to see efficiency in what they're doing. And so, and so, um, and so, um, and, and, and so John, so right here, this picture that he's painting, he's, he's like, you know, these guys right here, they're productive, but it's not about them. You know, he, he talked about John, and then the first thing he says when he's, Talking about that he's the, the, the way he's showing John said that John is saying I'm nothing. You know he paint he's like, I, 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 yeah I I am I'm, I'm nothing. It, it's somebody I I'm not even worthy the man is coming. I'm not even worthy to be like a slave to him and tie the sandals of his shoes. Tie the jail you know? Probably like tw thirty minutes ago or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw that really answer. Yeah. Okay, but it's gone. Nah, it, 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 Okay, okay. Um, yeah, they hit the two or three times. All right. And so somebody pick up for me in verse 9, but just keep this voice in your ear. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, at once he, John, saw the heavens torn open and the Holy Spirit, like a dove coming down, to enter into him. And there came a voice out of from within heaven, you are my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. Okay, check this out. Um, this is the voice. I want to figure So what's the picture that he's painting up that just happened right here? One, two, three verses. What just happened in three verses? Come Jesus. Come huh? Okay. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit said the dove came down, and the voice came from heaven. God claimed Jesus as his own. So, so, okay, so let's look at the, the voice that we've been hearing. Everything has been kind of, 
kind of belittling, not belittling, but 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 not lifting up everything. Um, John is shown that I'm nothing, and all of a sudden Jesus comes. And how is how how does Jesus look in this story? In this these three verses? Like a dove. Huh? Is he <coughs> But the spirit came on him like a dove. But how is he looking? This him as a as a person. How does how do these three verses make him look? Makes him uh, being fulfilled. Uh, okay, being fulfilled. Proven. Proven. It, it kind of, it kind of exalt him a little bit. Yeah. That's what God was doing with his son because he was well pleased with it. But he was showing the people who Jesus was as as. And John baptized him, and when he came up out of the water, the dove, you know, came up like the as of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. So the Holy Spirit is is, is very mighty, the, the the third of the Trinity, right? right? So hey, so that God was showing the people who Jesus was. Right, right. And so go ahead. A declaration. A declaration. And so just imagine, but this is different from what's happened before. Mm -hmm. Everything has been kind of suppressed. Suppressed, no, no glory, no glory, no glory. And all of a sudden, it looks like Jesus is getting glory, right? right. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus had two verses of glory. Mm -hmm. Three verses of glory. Watch what happens in verse 12. He get three whole verses of glory. And then watch the first. Once it's, this is declared that this is the son of God and we well pleased. He only had three verses of glory. And look at what happened in verse 12. Somebody start reading from in verse 12. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan and was with the wild beasts. And the angels went to him. Bam, that quick. He got three verses to be lifted up. And all of a sudden, he's out in the wilderness. He got three verses to be the Son of God and to be the Messiah. But then, the, the next verse, now he's he, that I mean that if that's not called bringing you back down, you know I mean, but that's 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 Mark. Uh -huh. You you're not gonna find anybody. That's what Mark does. Mark 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 sees Jesus getting that glory, and all of a sudden he. But he, this is what happens. It's so and you're gonna find another you'll find another gospel that that'll stretch that out for for scriptures. He, this is my little son who he will please that that'll, that'll stretch that thing out and and then even afterwards. You know, uh, but but he said, but he lets him get a little bit of glory, but because of his experience, because of his, who he is and his boy, immediately it turns to, but he suffered again, and that's going to be a recurring theme. He's great, but he suffered. He's great, but he suffered. You know, he's great, and, and sometimes in life, there are even some Christians that really look at. I'm gonna stop. Go ahead, time. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna get on it. Go ahead, y'all. I, I, I was just thinking about getting you know, like say, you know, three birds boom, he saw the boom, then he throw it to the wood. It just reminds me, I guess, just things that, that happen in life. Like, uh, I guess you know, not really out of school, but you know, okay, boom. You got to school, okay, everything good, boom. Right back to work. You bang for the time to work, the time to stop, the time to go. And, you know, so I guess you know when you, when you think, yeah, you know, it, it's fine, but that really, hey, it's, yeah, that's. And that he just looked at me and said, okay, well, hey, it is, but guess what? It's work that needs to be done. So we ain't, hey, yeah, I'm going to do this, but it, it's time. I got time to mess around. I need you to go back down. I need you to handle that. And, and, but they're also Christians. Because sometimes we'll look down on Christians. There are some Christians that their life is a constant struggle. They love Christ. They, they, they love Christ, but... But their life, the way that they are looking at it, it's a constant one thing after back to the other. After, at, at, at mount, it's constant mountaintops and valleys, mountaintops and valleys. And, and, and some, but sometimes we belittle those types of Christians and, 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 and basically like, you know, make, make look at them as unstable or, or something like that right there. But, but I think when you start to learn to appreciate the voice that's affected by the story, that person's story, you, you 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 see you see you see Mark, and and and, and you see Mark that that he doesn't even let it get real good to where there's another struggle, there's another struggle. We just keep going, but we are gonna keep seeing this play through, play throughout the scripture to where he he he, he, he points out that wow, good good good, wow, struggle, 
Jesus, Jesus, it must struggle. The Messiah, the Messiah, must struggle. And, and I'm just wondering, this is the question for me that I don't have an answer, but, you know, people that deal with life, you know, you have some people that, you know, say that, you know, God just, if they bless, they, you know, that life is good and they always, you know, just happy and, and but then you have some other Christians that they, they just that saved, but life is not always what they call the glass, uh, eye glass, glass roses. Rose colored glass. Yeah, rose what? Rose colored glass. Yeah, life is not always rose colored glasses to them. You know, and, and, and they might they might not, not not always be, you know, the giggly one and the, the but and, and they might take life a little bit more more serious and and, uh, and not that other people don't. But I'm just asking a question, a person that kind of looks at life as like you, you you ever heard the saying people say life is about storms, either you're going in a storm, you're in the middle of a storm, or coming out of a storm. And some people look at life, that's not how I look at life, but some people look at life like that. It's it's a storm. You you in one, you coming out of one, and you going in, or, 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 or you you about to go into one. And but is that wrong to look at life like that? Because it, it looks like Mark looks at it like that to me. Remember when Jesus took the cross when they put the cross on Jesus' shoulder and he carried his struggle with that cross all the way to Gethsemane, all the way to the uh, place where. Who do you think probably told that story? Him carrying a heavy cross like that right there. Who do you think probably told that story? One of the like, it's in one, one of the gospels. Okay, so and he says for us to pick up our cross and follow him. So why do we think that we are not going to have trials and tribulations? The Bible says that, and we all I always hear him say, "To whom much is given, much is required." That's right. That's right. So when we are in the Lord, look at how all the prophets, how they went through so many trials and so many tribulations. A prophet, you're a prophet, right? Okay, look at the different things that, everything that comes your way is not as easy as you think. So, back to all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose, not your purpose. Right. Everything that you're doing is the purpose of God because you're a child of God, you've been called, you've been chosen, and yet you're still doing the will. The will of God, you're allowing God to use you to do. Back to like to the, back to the scripture again. You say, listen at the voices of these 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 are uh, gospels. Each one of them are telling the story. The story that you tell is because God, the God in you, is not who you are, but it's whose you are. Right. That's right, and and that's what I just want to catch the the, the voice. You know, just, just catch that voice and, and when we start learning that voice, like I told you, 85% of the time, you're not going to always be right because you have a lot of cross stories. But 85% of the time, you, you can catch that, you can catch that, that voice. And, and I think that, I, I don't think that we can, I don't think that we can, can invalidate somebody that looks at life like a storm. You know, you're in, you're coming out, or you're going in one. I don't think we can take. I, I don't think we can take. We, I don't think we can take the credibility of, away from somebody that looks at life that way because that that is an angle based on where you are in the room. You know, that might be the angle that you're looking at 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 uh, at, 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 at this Christian life in. And I don't think we can we can devalue somebody's perception because that's how they look at life. I don't think so because each one of us is going to have a trial. And we can't look at each, and each one of the trials is going to be different. Right. So we have to be able, as a Christian and the love of God in us, we have to be able to accept each person as they are. God made them. God is allowing things to happen to each one of us so that he can take each one of us at a level, each one of us in him. Are at, is that, none of us in here are at the same level, except for the minister. Even all ministers are not at the same level. Because of the fact that God takes them 
level because there are times that you say you go through stuff and because he's teaching you stuff and like you say because of your experiences and because of the things that God takes you through because he says that I will never leave you nor will I forsake you so in order for you to grow in what I mean and God don't have to do that sometimes he allows things to happen to us so that we can perceive who he is even the more even the more, because when we love God so much, we don't thank Him for it, but in it. Yeah. And the sooner we, the more we thank Him in it, the less of we'll have. Right. And I think we can function better together once That's we right. understand that. Right. You know, Sonia, you know me and Sonia, we, we, we talk and I, I be on Sonia. And, 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 um, but I have to... I have to respect what Sonya dealt with in her life. And so I can't expect Sonya to always be just like, like me. That's right. I got I to gotta understand that Sonya's had a different life than I've had. And so it don't make the way she do this thing any less or any more than the way I do this thing. And so in my in my talking to Sonia saying, you know, Sonia, I, I, I need you to I need you to watch this and I need you to watch that. I still have to be understanding of, of Sonia's life. She gon' she gonna cry a lot. You know, I, I have to I have to I have to I have to be understanding of, of, of Sonia's life and, and, and how she does it. So as I give her advice, I still have to be mindful of Sonia's story. And, and not expect Sonya to do it just like me. And I think we can function together as a body if we don't expect everybody. Now, I, I'm not expecting Sonya to, 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 to sin, but what I'm saying is how we do this thing called the Christian. You know, I, 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 um, um, Sonya, can I just put your business out there? Okay. Um, like, like with Sonia, always, I, I talk with Sonia, I say, Sonia, I, I need for you to make sure you're going to put yourself in a box. Sonia, I need you to keep yourself open so that you can touch anybody. Rich, poor, male, female, black, white, poverty stricken, wealthy, what, whatever. I need you to be able to touch everybody, so I need you to always just watch yourself. You know, just make sure you keep yourself open to where people can feel comfortable approaching you, um, especially since you're your know, evangelist. But in wanting that, I still got to be able to, even though I want sign to be able to do all this stuff, I still got to, I still got to respect her story. And she might not always be as bubbly, well I'm not always bubbly either, but, but she might not be always, she, she might have stuff that she, she had to deal with. And and so and so as I remind Sonia, hey, Sonia, I, I know she had this meeting you didn't call. I, I, I still gotta I gotta have some lead. I gotta have some give. I gotta have some give and take. And, and understand that she still has her own story. She right. she still because she she not she might be in a different place and we all in the same room, but she might have a, a different angle that she's looking at this thing from. And if I can respect that angle and share with her my angle so that we can all kind of understand each other's angle. We can do this thing a lot better. But I think, I think we get caught up in the body of Christ and, and not separate churches, but even in one church, we get caught up in thinking our angle is the only right angle. The way I'm looking at it is the only right way. And I can't appreciate how somebody else might, might look at it. You know, and, and that's where the confusion comes in right there. I have to value the way that you look at it, the way that you worship, the way that you do this thing. Yeah, we're going to use each other. We're going to grow. We're going to use each other to grow. But I still have to value your story and how your story translates into how you do this thing. Does, does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. Yes, do. So many churches <coughs> don't look at the God in the person. They don't look at the actions. Oh, you dress that way. Oh, you're not a Christian. Oh, you went to that movie. Oh, they must not be a Christian. They judge the <coughs> outward appearance or the way the person carries themselves instead of understanding the God inside us. And, and one of the things I love so much about this church 
is that we all just accept us. We're all different, but we all love God. And that's what it's about. And that's really important for the church because even when it relates to things, you know, you might have somebody that used to be a, a homosexual, maybe just delivered from it. But, I mean, they still have the mannerisms, you know, still carry themselves in a certain way. And, 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 and then we just, we have to look at the God. We have to look at the person and, and, and really get our focus off of things like that. Let that stuff work it out. Work itself out. Okay, that person looks like they might be a little this, a little bit, but I can't start approaching and dealing with that person um, because this very thing that I'm being judgmental over, I, the, the scripture that I like the most, I, and I shared it with you maybe in a sermon or maybe in last week's Bible study, but when the elder, you know, was saying when they were talking about that woman that was caught in adultery, and then and then and then they wanted to stone her, and so you know he sat down and wrote something, and he stood, he said, all right, you go ahead, y'all going to kill her. But just the, the first, the one, the one that's without sin, they didn't cast the first stone. And then everybody had to drop their rocks. Right. And, and, and I think that we have to really look at things in that way that just be careful. Be careful by judging people. You know, and, and I'm not telling you anything that I don't have to deal with. You know, I, you know, I, I see a man that's, that's real feminine, that, 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 you know, all of a sudden his flesh is going to want to say, you know, that joke right there. Let, 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 let God deal with that. Let God deal with that, you know. You know, and, and, and that's different if I'm the, the pastor and he walks in and says, you know, this is my whatever partner and they sit in the concert hug and <laughs> things like that. That's the difference. Stuff. But I can't just assume stuff, you know. And But even if he comes and say that, at least him and his partner in church, all I'm going to say is can you, you know, based on our, our, our beliefs, can you not hug your partner? Why y'all sitting in the pew like that? But I do want you to come sit in the pew um, because I think that I have something that that can be of value to you based on the way I see scripture. But I, I can't cast a stone at them, and, and we have to be real careful in the body of Christ, and that's what stops us from growing it. And, it, and um, because there are little things that we can always pick out about people and say, "Oh, that person is wrong, bad because of that, or because of that." But, you know, it, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that people can. Pick at me and say he's bad because of that and because of that and because of that. And but some sometimes we just have to let God. Let's just be family and let God work it out. Let's just let's just be family and let, and let, let God work this thing out right here. Amen. Ty. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I guess what you're saying. I just think about because like, I grew up in the country and I think about when I used to see my uh, when I used to uh, I used to go out to the fields of my grandfather and my grandma when it was hard to feel 16, 17 hours. And, 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 and to me, it looked like a struggle. And, and the thing about it, it was like, they worked hard, and then when my, my grandmother would get home, my grandfather would go work on a tractor, but my grandmother would go on the roof and fix something on the roof. And, 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 and then, I just, I just remember one day, and you know, and then, you know, we used to, Go to church, but that's something that, that that was not an option. But I just remember one day when, when this was all going on, and, and my grandmother, you know, my grandfather, you know, he was just like laying back in the one stage work, you know, because he took that home. My grandma was always, you know, confessed by how blessed she was. And I just, and, and, you know, I'm young now. I'm young now, so don't get me. And I, 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 just, I, just, I just remember, I mean, I just remember one day. Just and it was like it was it was after church. We got home. I, I went from went to grandma's house to, and grandma went from church to right back on the roof. Granddad went in and, and, and sat down in the chair and the rock on the porch and just just, just shit. And so and I seen my grandparents brother. So one day I I, I asked the boy. I said I said I said I thought you was black. <coughs> I mean, I ain't know her, you know, I, I thought you was blessing me. And she said, and she was like, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> she, she grabbed me in such a way, but anyway, she was just like, because it was to her, it, 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 I was looking at what she was going through and the struggle and the 16 hour days in the field, coming from the field, going on the roof, going to church, coming back to church, 
go on the roof and then it, it, you know what, in that morning she prepared dinner for the girl. But uh, I was looking at what she was doing and I and I and I and I, and I thought it was a struggle because you know I even hear people you know talk about being blessed, you know, I'm like, okay, the stuff you know saying you're blessed, but why are you going through, why are you going through all this? But you know, I was looking at her struggle once. She was actually happy and she was blessed with what she was doing and for the simple fact she was blessed that she was she had the, the opportunity to work 16 hour a day. She was blessed to be able to, to go to church and have enough strength to, to, to get up on top of the roof after working out the church. So that was her thing to me. She was just like, you know, I'm asking that I thought you were blessed, but she's explaining to me, I'm blessed because of these reasons. But I you know, I was young, but I you know, I didn't know no better, but I was just, you know, it was just like that for me because I was standing up there. I'm not in the field. I was like, I ain't going to do it. But I, I'm looking at this, but you know, I'm thinking that she wasn't best, but she was. But she told me because I got the opportunity to work 16 hours a day and tell me about the struggle. Then I got the strength to come home and do this. I have the strength to go back on the roof. You know, so that's what, you know, that when you say that about how we look at things and how, how, you know, how we perceive, perceive things, we got to make sure that we, 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 we look at it. You can't just look at the struggle of what that person is going through and not think that they are not blessed or they're not as well in tuned or into God as we are. So I just, as you said, that just that, that episode that came up, I think I'll call it about something. But. Yeah, I mean, but that, that's what I think we have to be able to appreciate that. I know I was at Home Depot today, and, and as I was coming out, this little, little um, lady, she was sitting on the floor. Down the, the, the door, the big glass doors open, she was down there, but her daughter was sitting on the bucket, like got out of school, and sitting there while, while her mama was down there cleaning glass. She probably had a little contract with home people, whatever. And her mama was down there cleaning glass, washing windows, and the little girl was sitting on the bucket. And, and I was like, wow. And uh, but and the next time she got a job, you know, she, she's going she's gonna have a check that's coming in. And so I think we have to be able to appreciate the angle. And so and this right here says that as soon as Jesus was, was declared as the Son of God. It said that the Spirit compelled him to go into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among wild animals and angels took care of him. Later on, John was arrested and Jesus went into Galilee where he preached good, God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. And so it's like, Go straight from being exalted to now going out into the wilderness and now coming back out and preaching the good. I mean, it's 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 a it's a it's it, it's it's a John. There, there's nothing pretty about the picture that that John paints. Uh, in the end, it's got the same the same ending as every other gospel. But the picture um, is is it's a, it's a grind. It, 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 it's a grind. It's not rose colored glasses. And um and and, and so I think. I think as we kind of reflect and and, um, and continue in the gospel, the gospel of Mark, um, I think that you know we have to, as we look at this period of Lent, you know, appreciate the grind, appreciate the the, the struggles, you know, appreciate like Sister Color say, you know, I'm not going <coughs> to praise God for it, but I'm going to praise Him while I'm in it, you know. And, and, and I think that, and, and learn to appreciate that aspect, because as a body, um, I think we're, there's a lot of pieces that if we can just appreciate and understand that we have different voices, we have different struggles. All of us, my life is different from the life that, that Mary Davis, you know, lived. My life is different from the life that Octavia lived. My, uh, we all, we, we live different lives and, and our voices are different. The way that we see this thing called being a Christian is different, but if we can all appreciate everybody's angle, everybody's the, the beauty they're, they're, they're standing for, them, where they're standing from, I think that we can function together better as a, as a people. And George was, uh, I was bothering George, uh, but George was correct because um, uh, Jesus is the cousin of, uh, I mean, John is the cousin of Jesus, and we know that Jesus uh, came from Nazareth. All right. Any any comments? Any questions before we before we, we slide on? Yeah, uh, yes, you know, like once you give your life to Christ, 
to like it, okay, you know, once you, you know, God said, you smack the love of someone around, well, please, and he was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness, right? That's like when you give your life to Christ. You think, well, I gave my life to Christ, Satan ain't gonna tempt me? So what, what, what Jesus did, every time Satan tempted him, he hit him with the word. He kept hitting him with the word. So, once we give our life to Christ, we have that personal relationship with him, Satan will start to turn our life around. And you notice how John didn't even, because Jesus had a lot of victories. Mm -hmm. There's another gospel, maybe you all can think of the voice, but there's another gospel to where each time Jesus was tempted, you know, it wasn't that short. There was another gospel that said, took him up on a mountain, mm -hmm. took him here. To, it, it carried out, it, it told that story. Whereas here, he just said he took him out there to be tempted. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another gospel that tells that whole story. Uh, but, but Mark didn't think it was important to tell that story because he, he, he's after something else. Yeah, Jesus had a lot of victories. So he took him on the mountain, you know, and said the angel, the angel, you know, he, he said, yeah. turn the rock in the bridge, don't match or not. And, and those were victories. Yeah. And so Mark didn't necessarily feel the need to, to share that, that portion. I'm sure he knew it, but he, that's not what he, his intent. He's showing something different. And so he didn't go through, the, the, he didn't go through telling those stories. That, that he was, he's straight to the point. Um, this is what happened. He went through this right here. Um, and, 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 and when he came out, he came out preaching again. And we're going to find out that he's going to face something else. And that, that was what, that's what it was. All right.